it's um is like I've got a creator, something created me, you know, nature and whatever, and uh, and I'm putting my money on the fact that you know, it, it, just like a bird is meant to fly, I, I, a bird isn't meant to sit inside smoking crack. Do you know what I mean? That's not what a bird is meant to do. So, what about the great, uh, pardon? pardon? What about crack birds? Crack birds are different. They, they evolved to do that. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, other than crack birds, I'll grant you that point. Yeah. Um, so there's a there's a creator now. That seems to me to be a fact. Um, and I'm not saying that that creator is separate from like what's here and now. And I quite often come to the conclusion that the creator is the same sort of creative energy that is uh, that motivates me to even talk and things like that. Uh, but there's a level at which um, it uh, primordially generated me, and uh, that intention wasn't to stay inside and smoke crack. Uh, there's also the the outer world and the and the dimension of circumstance and uh, conditions that will be applied to me over the course of the day and things. In a sense, being the god of you know what I have to come into contact with, and that is quite often the one in which that I, I, I allow myself to kneel and do the prayer to because I it's it's submitting it's consciously and ritually submitting myself to acceptance of what comes in the day you know the many difficult challenging things that might come uh, and uh, submitting myself to that rather than finding myself in a battle with it you know or something like that and resisting it uh and the the god that i pray to uh is quite often more the element of the god that i pray to is quite often more um uh, of a, a archetypal uh, perhaps i'm even um, you know I, I don't put a belief in it or not it's it's uh, it may be non-existent but i pray to it as if it exists because to me one of the another function of prayer is to bring myself into line with my highest values and the way i do that is by you know ask what sorting out what i want to get out of life and and therefore you know you might put that in the form of a wish you might think well if you had three wishes why don't you sort of wish to a genie in order to become conscious of the things that you want but the best genie that you can imagine is you know kind of your stereotypical god archetype so uh in order to elucidate uh the my highest values i i'm praying to that to that god do you know what i mean yeah well i mean here's the interesting thing about prayer is let's say you have indecision about some matter what ought i do in this circumstance god ought i direct my energies towards a given path that's looking like my choice of paths or ought i shake things up and try to find a more ideal path because the one that i it seems the best available option isn't that ideal so, some sort of question like that okay mm-hmm. um and at some point after engaging in the behavior maybe it would have happened regardless of the behavior but let's just say at some point after engaging the behavior you feel a certain um, clarity on the thing and you you make a determination as to which course is more resonant with god's will now the thing is what you're saying is you're identifying a source of correctness that's not logical that may be fi based but if it is it's not a kind of fi that i'm familiar with and that may be ni uh that's quite possible but regardless it's Hmm. something that i can't approach uh directly and yet is a way of knowing that is otherwise closed off to me it has at least some validity and basically your your gut instinct on on what the truth is becomes 
becomes crystallized when you, crystallized. for me, when I pray about stuff, if I give it a little time. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's just as simple as that. You know, um, you start off because we, especially as addicts, we can make uh, decisions uh, impulsively. So an impulsive decision, you know, isn't always the best decision, as my life's proved. And uh, to give it some time and to give it some contemplation about what, like, this, this ultimate archetypal deity might do, you know, might want to happen, is in itself to bring forth the presupposition of what an archetypal deity might want to happen, which in itself is a, a, an up upvaluing of the uh, decision-making process. I think there needs to be the hurlage of thunderbolts and the bestowance of plagues. Right, sure. But, uh, you know, it's a good of your understanding at the end of the day. That's, that's the thing, though. It's a good of your understanding. It always occurred to me that the reason why I need to go and do, uh, why I'm all right with doing, just doing this program, you know, and just praying, not like a ro not robotic, not like a robot, but robotically in the sense of a mechanized, you just do it, um, is that a Christian person and a Muslim person can undoubtedly use the program in the same way, and they'll pray and they'll they'll get the same effect out of it so what does that mean that uh, you know there can't be a muslim god and a christian god at the same time therefore the benefit must be derived from the actual prayer now, i want the benefit so i'll All do right, it well listen how about I think of it like this way which god is more likely to be forgiving enough to let even the heathens get success in talking to god the christian version or the muslim version So in other words, it's probably just Christian God being cool. It's probably not there's <laughs> one God. Okay, the Muslims are wrong, but Christian God's just being cool. It's an interesting thought, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as I knew he would. High five, Christ. <laughs> he high five me. Surf a dude, God. Do you want to see what Christ's hands looks like? I'll show you. Christ, can you high five me again? Sure. Oh, he's a little person. No, he's a big person. Oh, he's he's a, yeah, but he's kind of like a a large midget, oversized midget. Uh, I, I'll tell him. Okay, I I hear you. He's offended. Jesus Christ but, is offended. You know, offense is taken. So be prepared for some some hurlage of thunderbolts and some bestowments of plagues. If you get pimples, okay, I will. The weather's pretty good here right now, but I'll be prepared for it. If you get pimples, it could be a beginning of a plague of boils. I'll keep that in mind. You know, my God bestowed a plague of boils on me one time last for six months. I was completely covered in red dots. It was awful. And I was like, Jesus Christ, God. And he's like, I ain't Jesus Christ. I'm Tyrone. Remember, you made me up an AA. Hey, Jeremy. Never, you should never have made up Tyrone. God of, of sassy, sassy commentary. He just sasses me all the time. Damn straight I sass you. I'm Tyrone, God of sassiness. Okay, Tyrone. You suck. Thanks, Tyrone. That's I should have picked a different god. I didn't know you couldn't tra you couldn't trade it in later. You ain't gonna trade me Tyrone. in. <laughs> Is Tyrone the god of food stumps? <laughs> no. That's a racist joke. He's a god of sassy comebacks, okay? Oh, but that's okay. Yeah, it is. Not every black person is Eddie Murphy, you know. Hey, hey, listen up, Castro. You racist. My, my sassiness is not racist. 
All right. Yeah, he said, you shut the fuck up, Hosek. <sighs> Tyrone, don't talk to me like that. Talk to you however I want. Kestrel, you shut the fuck up, too. Tyrone, please, you're offending my... Shut the fuck up, Tyrone. I'm sorry, guys. My AA guy is getting out of hand here. Yeah, it keeps possessing you. Yeah. I'll try to curtail that. You know. Yeah, you need to get Kim to come and do an exorcism. <sighs> well, you know, I have several. Because I found out you couldn't trade them in, but you can add new ones. So, you know. You got a kind of MPD thing going on. Well, I tried, to, I tried the opposite after Tyrone. I got William come in. Oh. Hey there, William. Got any godly wisdom or something? Well, don't forget that you're a good guy. Thanks, William. That's great advice. So he wasn't very useful. Yeah, you need you need Kim to do an exorcism. Although I thought she'd already jumped up and down on top of you screaming, oh God, oh God. She did. It didn't get quite all the gods out of me yet, though. There's, oh. there's dozens and dozens left. Yeah. Even when she gets them all out, I have a feeling some of them are going to regrow. Like Kirk, God of Slaying the Puss. Damn right, I slay the puss. I'm fucking Kirk. You sure are, Kirk. You sure helped me get sober. Just gotta take the first step. Find some puss. Step two, slay that puss. Step three, fuck yeah. It's that simple. It's a three-step paragraph. Yeah, thanks. Kirk, I tried that and uh, woke up the next day. Uh, someone, someone sort of cracked in. And it was awful. I had been bludgeoned by a prostitute. I didn't even do any drugs or alcohol. So anyway, you can see at the dangers of AA if you if you take that of your own description of your own making God too literally. You can. Uh... Well, yeah, I mean the big problem I see a lot of people. Um, it's, it, it may or may not be a problem for them. I don't know, but it's when they. And, and this is an acceptance of it because that is what people would do. But, and it actually says in the book, you're not supposed to act as if when you're praying, you, you're, trying to, you're trying to listen for God's will in a sense. You, you don't want him to be speaking directly to you. You know what I mean? You, you ever hear these people share and it's like, and God said to me this, and God said to me that, and then they're at the pulpit later on. God told me those people are liars. Well, thanks, shirtless woodman. You're welcome. I pray every night to a god called the Lady of Nature. She's my mother. I come from a tree. Thanks, shirtless woodman. You're welcome. You're welcome, host Eric. You're welcome to my commentary anytime. You kind of sound like Tyrone. That's racist. Not all black people sound the same. I didn't say you were black, Tyrone. I mean, shirtless woodman. I'm not. I'm tan. I'm wood, woodly tan. You see my new bong? I got a bong, new bong today. It's made out of silicone. It's made out of silicon. Yeah. Is that, is that healthy? Yeah, it's well, I don't know if it's healthy, but it's way better than glass or um any other options. You can get plastic, you can get glass. Um I tried to get a stainless steel one. I just can't find one. It um, looks good. How much was it? <clears throat> this was forty dollars out the door, tax and everything. Which is cheap for these things. It is. It is cheap. Yeah. Right, I know the place to go. It's got good deals if you pay cash. 
if you don't pay cash, then they charge more. Anyway, this thing is fucking so precision. It feels like smoking out of like a BMW bong or something. This little bowl pulls out. Okay, this is silicone. The nice thing about silicone, when you clean it, it just it scrapes right up like a little uh, peel of resin. You know, scrapes right right up to the silicone. None of the silicone comes up. Unlike other things, you know, you can't scrape any of the silicone off. When you scrape it, it's just smooth. It just comes right up. And uh, it doesn't burn. You know, it, no matter how hot you get it, it doesn't, I mean, at least I'm sure you could burn it, but I've not been, I've not applied flame directly to it, obviously. I'm applying it to this metal thing. But this part doesn't seem to really get hot at all. I don't know. It holds a lot of water, and also the tube, the inside tube here, which is also silicone, has these little holes in it, which basically force you to fill it up with enough water. Because if you don't, if you don't cover all those little holes, then it's like having an extra carb. It doesn't work right. It's not a reclaimed dildo. That would be a good thing to make a bong out of, though. Now you're thinking. The other cool thing about this, if it's like the pipe, anyway. It actually looks like someone, you know, the, the mower just was training that day and didn't quite get how much you needed to lop off. <laughs> it glows in the dark. I don't know if you can see it glowing in the dark, but it does. Let me just try to load it up with some more light. You can see it glow in the dark. Better. Now it's glowing. Now it's glowing. Wow, huh? See that? Yeah, it looks impressive. That's pretty neat, actually. It looks cool. I like it. It looks, I like it better glowing, this color glowing in the dark than regular color. Before we bought this bond, Kim and I bought a small pipe version of this same pink and blue candy. Stuff we call it the candy pipe. So naturally, this is the candy bong. But realistically, this should be the last bong I ever have to buy unless I lose it someplace because you can't break it. This pipe is still in perfect shape as far as a smoking utensil, and it's kind of dirty looking, but. It doesn't, it doesn't wear down. It doesn't like break down. Like the O-rings and glass bongs always wear down. The stems crack. Uh, the O-ring on my stainless steel bong broke down. These things are perfect. Kim made a valid critique of it, though. There is one valid critique. The carb is a little too high. I'd like the carb slightly lower. But that's such a minor quibble. But more interestingly, actually, than my buying this bong yesterday, 
is the other thing we bought yesterday after visiting at least a dozen different pawn shops and probably a total of 20 or so different jewelry places. Um, we bought an engagement ring yesterday. So now I gotta talk to Delilah and Susie and Jewel about how to propose because Tim wants me to propose the yeah, engagement ring. And she says to wait a couple weeks and surprise her. So I've got to surprise her with a proposal. So i got to talk to some chicks about this. I'm a big fan of it as well. This one, anyway, it's going to be great. Kim was so happy yesterday when, when, when she found this this ring. We were we had to go down to Long Beach, which allowed us to pass through some kind of shady areas, and we thought the pawn shops, you know. How the phone lets you go at a stop. So we added a couple pawn shops on the stops list. But the first one we went to on that list yesterday. I we went in there and she started talking to this lady. You know, first she, first she talked to a guy and then I mean this is how it always works with these pawn shops. They've got a lady who's there basically to deal with ladies who come in to buy jewelry. And it's probably they're buying uh engagement or wedding rings or something like that. It's a good play, good way to get uh, a ring for about half or so what you pay at the either online or in a proper jewelry store. Um, of course, rings are ridiculously priced. You know, I mean, it's you can find good deals if you if you look for them. And, but Kim had very particular taste, so we knew we were going to spend some money, you know. Uh, she wanted a vintage Art Deco style ring with minor cut diamond and ideally three diamonds and a certain kind of filigree and stuff like that. Well, so, I mean, we looked at a shit ton of place. Well, it's got littler diamonds around the three, the three main diamonds, you know. One, one bigger one in the middle, and then the smaller ones next to them on either side, and then little, little, little ones all around the filigree. Yeah. Well, anyway, and we've been looking at places all around for weeks now. It's been kind of a fun thing to do periodically. Every time we go out, we see, uh, anytime we leave the area, pawn shops near me. You know, LA, you lose shit down all around. And finally today, or yesterday, I guess, you know, she was looking at this ring, and I noticed the rings in this place were were good prices. You know, I've mean, been to a shit ton of them, I can tell now what things get good prices and which ones don't. Um, and having looked at a lot of diamonds, I can tell which ones are clear and which ones are cloudy. And, you know, so I'm learning about this shit. It's unavoidable. You can't help but learn about it. It's funny I didn't learn about it in my first two marriages at all. Um, anyway, she started looking at this, talking to this chick, and she, the chick went to the back, brought out the tray of rings that they keep in the back for people who are serious about buying engagement rings, which like all pawn shops have this tray I've discovered. And she immediately seized upon one. First thing that was encouraging was the lady had a ring on herself. Is her engagement ring. She I was she and I Kim and I were describing the ring to the lady and then she's like, You mean like this? 
I mean, she was wearing one that was very similar to what Kim wanted. And, uh, and she's like, hey, that's so close to what I want. Oh, my God. How do you know? So she was very excited about that. And then when they brought the tray out, when she brought the tray out, she saw this one ring. She seized upon it right away. And she looked and looked and looked at it and spent longer looking at it than she had on any ring previous in all these fucking 25 shops. And finally, after going back and forth, she was like, I, I love it. And she hadn't said that about any other ring here before. She said, I like it. I really like it. But she hadn't said, I love it. So I was like, well, let's get it then. And we did. And it was affordable for an engagement ring, you know. And, uh, but still a nice ring. So, you know, and, And then we went, they included in the, in the price, uh, rhodium dipping, polishing and sizing. Oh, it's a two thing too. It's got two rings. It's got a engagement ring and it's got a, a band that you put with it when you get married, I guess. And, uh, and when we got those back, you could, it was amazing because it, it, it's, there's it's old rings, you know? at least 30s it can't be any younger than 30s given i researched it a bit i know about the cuts and stuff like that it's the miners cut it has that kind of not so many facets on it it's old diamond and the the cleaning revealed all this filigree detail that you couldn't even see before it, so it's definitely old and given the given where it is it wouldn't surprise me at all and if what the lady says is true which is well it's usually this stuff's inherent jewelry that people don't want to keep for whatever reason either just it's like they rather have the cash or it's not their style and so then they usually sell this stuff to us outright they don't pawn it that's what the lady said i don't know if it's true or not but anyway uh she was Kim after we got it back from the the jeweler that, that was nearby that uh, she works with. Um, Kim was just ecstatic with it, which made me really happy. We went back, showed the lady again, and what it looked like now, and uh, finished our errands. You know, want to go to the rest for a day, but it made me very happy to see Kim beaming in that fashion. And for us to not have absolutely broken the bank, coming in under budget, you know, we had a reasonable budget for an engagement ring, as one necessarily must. A woman has got to feel like she's got enough of an investment on her finger to, to be proud of it. And for others to look at it and say, oh, yeah, I don't know if she caught your fire on money or something. But anyway, so that's pretty exciting. It was really fun because we we did our due diligence. It's like I felt confident that this was the ring that Kim wanted because I'd seen the ones that were close, but no, this one's too it sits too high on my finger. This one's just too broad on my finger. This one's too uh, you know. I, I heard enough of that to understand by the end exactly what she was looking for. I could describe it faster than she could to the lady. So, uh, it was a pretty magical day in general. The slabs were really accommodating. We had all these errands to run. And she's been married twice before. I've been married twice before. It's their third marriage for each of us. Every... Every, John, every leg of the journey was strangely traffic free, which never happens in LA. It was a beautiful day. It was like 72 degrees, white puppy clouds in the sky. Um, we I stopped at a stainless steel store first, where I was going to try to buy materials to make a stainless steel bomb. They just didn't have what I needed. 
And I'm glad they didn't because I ended up getting this and this is preferable. I would have spent this much on materials anyway. Uh, then, so that was coincidentally and fortunately the stainless steel store I needed to go to was very close to the Long Beach location I needed to go to on an errand. So then we plugged in pawn shops between there and Long Beach and voila. There it was. Super nice lady, super good price, super great store, super good rhodium dipping, all that shit. Super happy can. We go do our errand. We go uh, back, pick up the rings from the dipping and stuff. We go up to Temple City, drop off a prescription at the pharmacy. And much to my surprise, they're both available to pick up today. I thought it was going to be a wait. Um, very nice. Go get this bong, 20 minutes later, go back, prescription's ready, go home, again, remarkably no traffic, and uh, pretty great day, considering we were in the car a lot, oh, we also went to this wonderful little cafe called Potholder Cafe, and had delicious brunch type thing, or late lunch, but we had breakfast, but it was, that was quite good too, so uh, it was a nice day, how was your day, Jeremy? It was fine. Well, it just started, but I am detecting signs that my Depression is subsiding, so probably decent. Now, is that an economic depression or an emotional depression? Hmm. Have you been investing emotionally on margin? This round has been in effect for a year and a half of depression. You should have your wife massage your prostate. I hear it cures depression. I understand my sadness. Yeah, I'm understanding it well. It's depressing, sure, it's gladness. And I'm going through emotional hell. I'm Jeremy. Jeremy, depressed as he, depressed he, I'm so sad and crying all the time. There, Jeremy, does that make you feel better? It does, I can tell. Too bad you can't smoke bong rips at work, huh? That's gay, though. Nobody wants to drink bourbon. It just makes you hungover. Yeah. You can't work and drink. Drinking makes you go like, oh, I don't want to be at work. I want to be drinking. Instead of bourbon, they should give you speed and weed. And then, if they had to give you alcohol, they could give you mead, so it would at least rhyme. You should sue the company for intoxicant discrimination.
say it's time for us to at least advance the separate but equal allotments of drugs for different drug users. And then later on, we'll have integrated drugs. So it'll be, you know, cocaine with meth and weed in it, dipped in a bottle of alcohol and left to dry on a field of opium. And then you'll have to consume it multiple ways at once. The smoke, shoot, boof, snort, and gum the drugs all at the same time. It takes three or four people to help. It's going to be the new craze and the teens go crazy about the news alarmistly announces. Right now, the news is alarming, so alarming about the opioid crisis. Oh my God, so much alarm. Huh. Opioid crisis, my ass. I don't do opioids or opiates either. I don't do any downers. Downers are for losers. Just kidding, downer lovers. You're not losers. You just like the loser drug. Downers are loser drugs because, I mean, um, look at the name. They're downers. Yeah, no cocaine either. Cocaine's... Cocaine's amphetamine's deformed little sister. You don't want to get on that. Yep. Jeremy's like me. It's just weed, meth, and acid every day. He likes to boof nitrous oxide hits and then fart them back out into a bag and then inhale it. I tell him, Jeremy, I don't think your butt lining can absorb nitrous oxide like that. But your farts do make you go a lot faster. It's a drag racing joke. I don't make a lot of drag racing jokes, but <laughs> an LSD ecstasy bender well, I've gone on an LSD bender, and that's just a bad trip. LSD is kind of a scary drug. I would not recommend it to anybody. Um, ecstasy, I've gotten good, strong ecstasy one time, and it was like they say, you, you feel like every you are an angel, and so is everybody else. And oh my gosh, you guys, everything is so nice. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. I tell you what's a stupid drug. Ketamine. Don't do ketamine. It's a stupid drug. Let's see. What else is a stupid drug? Um, Vicodin. Stupid drug. Mm, Xanax. Stupid drug. Salvia, stupid drug. Yeah. Good drug, mushrooms. Do lots of mushrooms. For sure. Mushrooms make you cheerful. Make you cheerful and glad. If you like cheerful gladness, you're going to like mushrooms. Unless you have a bad trip, in which case, don't do mushrooms. Uh, some people do. Most people don't. Yeah, you just do like an eighth or less of mushrooms. Probably don't do a full eighth the first time you take them. But even if you do a full eighth, you'll be fine. It's just, uh, don't do more than that first. I mean, don't do more than that at all, really. Unless you just ate them like yesterday, in which case you have to eat twice as much. But uh, in that case, wait a couple days. So then you don't have to eat twice as much again. That's just a waste. Anywho, the moral of the story is... 
Mushrooms are provide a good reset to one's ontology. They seem to put things back in perspective. I've never gotten a hold of DMT either. I don't want to. Uh, I've heard it's nuts, but it does sound compelling, as though it compels your experience to uh, follow its runaway horse. I also had that experience, but I don't remember. I just blacked out from it. Apparently, I got up and walked into this guy's house and was like, ah, bah, bah, but I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't like those kind of experiences. I like it when I take a big enough long rip that it kind of fades me out for a second. That's about the full extent of my uh, walk on the edge. Um, occasionally, I'll still buy four or five whipped cream things and nitrous up in the parking lot of the supermarket. Every maybe six months, nine months, I'll do that. Well, I was not doing experimentation as far as I was concerned. I was getting loaded. And there were just certain kinds of getting loaded I didn't like and certain kinds I did. Lots of stuff makes me nauseous. And, you know, if anything that makes me too nauseous, then I don't like it. Uh, like pills, a lot of times make me nauseous. <laughs> Mushrooms make me nauseous, but. You, it's just a little period of time where you probably puke towards the beginning and then you're, you're done with that. A lack of concern had a why not attitude. Why not indeed? Well, one reason why you ought not do drugs is because there are some kinds of criminals who justify violence against you if you're doing drugs and get away with it because of the courts and the laws and stuff. That's a good reason not to do drugs, I suppose. But, uh, you know, we each have to express our own ontology through whichever drug modalities work best for us, you know. Some of us need a little bit of up. Some of us don't. Hi, Margie. Why, if it isn't Margie, an icon, an institution of the INFJ personality type. Well, I shaved it for my costume yesterday. I'm anxiously waiting for it to grow back. I much prefer the way I look with a beard, but uh, it takes a couple of days to get some some meat to it. Meaty beard. I was Rick. I was Rick of Rick and Morty fame. And I'll show you. Um, I'm going to put a video link here and then I will push watch together so we can look at about a 30 seconds or so of it, but uh, then I'll just close it out. The reason is it's not a public video, but because it's a shitty video, but you can see my costume. Up. And that's what really matters. Okay. Look, guys. Hey, hey, you're all supposed to be looking at my costume. Are you all looking? Oh, I haven't put it yet? Okay, we just hold on. Everyone get get ready to look at my costume. You're going to be like, wow, that's a great costume. Okay, here we go. You want some candy, Superman? Yeah. There you go. Say thank you.
Hello. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Our friends, it's me. Brick. Happy Halloween. Thank you. And I'm enjoying this evening a little Halloween, Halloween festivities Halloween. at the craziest go, Halloween go. neighborhood you've ever seen in your life. We've got all kinds of activities going on around here. <laughs> I feel like that's too much weight for that little Vespa. Do you see a bounty? Yeah. That was hilarious. That was that he, like, <laughs> I just see Haley like bobbing in the front. I'm like, oh my god. That's pretty funny. I totally want to hear this. Anyway, at some point, um, in that video, I'll put some pictures up too at some point. You can see I've got brown pants on which Rick has I've got a belt just like Rick's except my buckle is silver instead of gold and I had some black shoes like Rick has it's a pretty easy costume but Kim made it really pop because she's a hairdresser so she knows how to to do the the dyeing the hair making it spiky she I mean well she's been growing out my hair for months in order to do that for this costume she's in charge of my hair my hair is as it is who's in the ENTP Jeremy oh you gotta watch it it's really good I you know I didn't watch it I've been told to watch it for a, a million times by a million people and I finally got around to watch it yeah she did a great job she the fact that she thought of this months ago and started Stop cutting my hair so it would grow out. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty high tech costume thinking right there. I also had a flask to go with it. I didn't have the the interdimensional gun, but uh, the problem was I was super sick. So she went to all the trouble with costume. We had some people over. Her kid came over. My kid was gonna come over, but it got too late. Uh, you know, I went to bed early because I was so sick, and so I told Delilah, just, you know, she, won't, she wanted to come over after work, but I was like, you know. Anyway, that was nice. What's going on with you, Margie? Are you still with your ESTP mate? I'm curious because I'd like to hear about that uh, duality relationship if you are, or if you're not, either way. You have an ENFP mate? And you're an INFJ? That's, how does that work out? Yeah, but you counter-value each other's tool functions. When you're like, here's some wonderful FE, they're like, yeah, okay, it's great. Who cares about FE? Now here's some delicious FI. And you go, okay, yeah, that's great. Just a nice FI. Uh, not that that matters at all, but you can super ego. What does that mean? There you go. Let's, let's make one friend power is form of complete intuition. I don't buy Sissionic's role functions. Role function, my ass. Due to your insecurity functions. I don't buy Sissionic's blocks either. There's no justification for them.
The one implies the four. The two implies the three. Why would they be not in that order? Yeah, you can. I can provide some SE too. I do provide a fair amount of SE around here. Um, but, you know, mostly what I do, I think, is find, you know, each type has certain kinds of weaknesses that every significant other except for their dual is going to find annoying. So Kim's polar TE combined with her SI DOM lack of big pictureness. I could imagine causing some people frustration. You know, like yesterday, she went to get this little white thing here to put next to her chair so that she had a surface to put stuff on. And she pulled the classic bad TE maneuver. She failed to move the, fill, the full trash can that was between where the thing was and where she wanted it to be before moving the thing, knocking over the full trash can, spilling all the trash all over the ground. That sort of thing could be very annoying if you valued TE a lot. I just was like, yep, there goes all the trash. <laughs> Who the fuck cares, right? She picked it up. I, I helped her pick it up. No big deal. Who cares? It's funny, I remember so clearly my childhood, my mother countervaluing TE in the same fashion. Okay, so you broke a plate. It's not a big deal. Nobody's gonna get off. Nobody's gonna get upset about it. That was always my mom's attitude, and it kind of ran counter to my dad's. But in areas that my mom didn't consider, that my dad didn't consider significant, he sort of let my mom's uh, FE sensibilities run the show. So. Hmm. See, that's the area where I think you guys would truly appreciate it. Because you each ignore the other one's dominant function, it means that what I take ignoring to mean is you treat it as though it ought to take care of itself. And when you have a significant other with that, as your ignored function is their dominant, you feel very comfortable with that person because they help that element of things to take care of itself by providing it. And so that's why INFJs and ENTPs get along so well. I would also be why ENFP and INFJ might get along well too, is there's an inherent trust built in with when you have the other person's ignoring function as your dominant. You seek SE, but you get a different kind of action. So that could be a little bit frustrating. Their insecurity is SE, but they could do it. And ENFPs, because they got TE, tend to be a little bit more SEE -E than ENTPs, who are TI. S I N I T I T E no F E T E uh, T I F I S I no sorry uh N E S E well that's what you what you view as evil as well. Like ENTPs don't like brutishness, a lack of imagination, a careless pushing through of things without considering 
adequate deliberation, you know? Yeah. For sure. I'm, but mostly what I'm afraid of is, and what I don't like and what I think evil is, is doing things to do things or doing things without adequate justification or doing things that have unintended consequences, shit like that. Following through on decisions, even though realities on the ground have changed and that decision should be scrapped. In other words, favoring particularism as supported by TI and FI over uh, over generalism, principalism, really. In other words, only favoring principalism as a general rule when it's in its most narrow, in its, when it's in its narrowest construction and favoring um, particularism in almost every instance because ultimately we uphold justice as our primary value. And so, yeah, for sure. I, I, I prefer that, that the government do much less than it needs to do rather than any more than it needs to do. Provided less than what it needs to do doesn't preclude it from policing real transgressive crimes. Of course the government should be involved in that. Like, if you get armed robbed, you know, armed robbery victim, then, yeah, the cops should try to arrest that guy and put him in jail. If you get raped, yeah, the guy, cops should try to arrest that guy. If um, you get shot or something, or assaulted, or killed, or kidnapped, or any real crimes, then, of course, those people, that's why we have cops, is to prevent those kind of crimes. And people call the cops for fucking all kinds of weird reasons. Like, the neighbors called the cops on me twice now. They, they still came in, the whole fucking crowd of them came and trick-or-treated in my house, so anyway. So, they called the cops on me twice, even though I didn't do anything at the time. And their explanation of it was, we feel threatened. But I didn't make any threats. So, their feelings are irrelevant. Um, <laughs> right, well, NE, in my understanding of it, is metaphysical action. It's ideation. SE is the rendering of ideas into the physical world. In other words, taking action on the decided course. So, naturally, ideation loses, you know, every time a potentiality is collapsed into reality, myriad potentialities that existed prior to that collapse are rendered moot or non-existent or dead or something, you know. So, if I say, well, we could do this, 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 this. Now, let's talk about the reasons why we should do A, here's some reasons, and then the ESTP goes, too late, I did see already. And you go, oh, okay. So, I mean, that's what... It's not It's not the harmony and flow aspect of it. It's, it's the ideation aspect of it. When I'm in a setting where SE, harmony, and flow um, are called for, like playing basketball or or riding a bike or something like that, you know, if I'm trying to do that kind of thing, then there's no conflict there to be in that kind of state of flow with people who are also in that kind of state of flow. The challenge is when, it, now in that kind of situation where you're playing basketball, your SE is saying, let's follow through on the decided course. Of course, it's already been decided. And the the course is to play this game according to an understood set of rules. So there's no ideation required. There's just physical manifestation required. You might have to do a little bit of calculation like, okay, um, let's see, there's only this much time left on the clock. Do I have time to pass it over here to, before it's, you know, that kind of stuff. But it, you don't have to 
come up with. Okay, now let's make it so the rules are blah, 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 blah. It's just all physical action. And the metaphysical thing is built off of the physical realities. So the scoreboard reads 100 to 97, team A beat team B. That's when all the meaning making happens. That's when the NE goes to work and says, let's write a story about this, let's write a sports story about this or whatever. It is they're not necessarily incompatible with each other. They just the reason we tend to think of SE as evil though is because when they are incompatible, they're incompatible in a way that SE wins all the time. SE defeats NE when it does. I mean that's not saying a whole hell of a lot, obviously. Tautologically it's so, but in its when when SE can seize upon a course and execute it, it can either be the most disruptive force and or the most effective force and or the decisive force. So, for example, if you're trying to argue with an ESTP and you're in the middle. And, and so anyway, that is why. And then he just interrupts you and says something like. Your chin looks like a penis. And everybody laughs. And then you go, I, I'm, I've lost my train of thought. And then you try to start like berating him about that thing. And then he's like, and your nose looks like a vagina. And you're like, Ugh. you know, so they, they can do that sort of thing in which they're basically collapsing rhetoric into um the the closest thing that words can do to slapping somebody right or they might for example just say as you're trying to to scold them they might go like hey julie come on let's go over there i want to show you something and you know like get up on her because he knows that you like her you like julie and then julie's like hey okay because julie's stupid and and then then what do you do or you know they might um they might simply like in my first example take one of the give possible courses that are being discussed and just start acting it and says come on everybody let's just do this one i'm tired enough of empty talk so those are ways in which se will always defeat any in many contexts in some contexts any will always defeat se and vice versa, you know, but uh, but because it has that potentiality to undercut everything that extroverted intuition is doing in a moment's execution of SE stuff, uh, that's why any users tend to view, any DOMs tend to view SE as e the source of evil. Another example is while the ENTP is sitting at the table at the bar, trying to screw up his courage to go talk to that chick, ESTP walks up to her, puts his hand on her back, and is walking to her to the bathroom to bend her over. And ENTP goes, but I'm being the gentleman. <laughs> well, gentlemen's, gentlemen don't win is the moral of that story in that context. However, if you, you're talking about, well, I mean, you can see that Extroverted intuition can substitute for extroverted sensing pretty well, as it did for me when I did internet dating on OkCupid and used this community to uh, bolster my legitimacy and uh, make women feel more safe to go out with me. I had various chicks sort of give me the, you're okay. Uh, it's okay to go out with this guy, you know, that helped. And then also because it, it was like, a way of showing off that hey I've got a YouTube channel whatever <laughs> I don't know if that gets you anything or not but uh, that's an any kind of TE approach to doing the SE thing so I didn't have to go do it in person and once I came up with a good idea about how to execute OkCupid I was able to use any to successfully navigate that system by taking a very SE approach though I, I sent it a message saying hey you want to go out to dinner right I'm getting off work right now you want to meet at this place in 45 minutes it's near your location you know what I'd see what city they were in I'd put like okay 
Oh, you want to meet at BJ's in Covina in 45 minutes? I'm getting out of work soon. I'm buying. It's a very S-E, like, boom. Let's go out right now. I haven't even spoken a word to you. I don't know anything about you. I just see your picture and your profile. And apparently almost nobody does that. Everybody tries to chit-chat and small talk their way into some, I don't know. Well, that S-E style rhetorical for worked brilliantly well. It's not because I've got good SE, it's because I've got good any, and I actually decided to apply a little TE to the equation, and I came up with some workaround to my lack of SE to get me successfully, um, at least try to be, for a chick to try me out a little bit, I'd like to say, okay, well, you're a possibility, because that's not something I had experienced there for, really. Why not? Shitty SE, you know? Beta SE and Gamma SE? I don't know. Who's in Beta Quadra? INFJ? Uh, ENFJ? IST? Who is it? I don't know. Uh, STPs and NFJs? Okay. Well, I mean, I don't think it differs. It just <sighs> differs in terms of where the slot is. So it's like if you've got dominant SE, then right. Well, if it's on the back side, obviously you have a lot more trouble with it. So NTPs have the most conflicted relationship with SE, INTPs and ENTPs, and um, ENFPs and INFPs. Piece. Those are the types that have the most conflicted relationships with SE. We're going to, you know, the the polars, the INXPs, they're going to just not understand how to pull the trigger on shit. They just, the idea of falling through on the decided course for them is, is senseless. How can you really ever fall through on any decided course when either... You're not done thinking it all through, or your feelings are constantly changing about it. You know, so and that's your tool function. That's your default way of approaching everything in the world. You're fucked at that point. You know, uh, I mean, well, I'm sorry. The tool function is the expert intuition in conjunction with that. It it, it makes them. Well, it makes them like I am with FI, which is to say they can experience SE, but if they're called upon to excel in SE or to rely upon SE to, uh, in crunch moments, it's not going to be there for them, and it's a good way to fail. Just like if I make decisions based on my FI, not a good idea. My decision to be with Kimberly, for example, though bolstered by shit tons of FI, is 100% logical in the initial calculus of it and becoming only ever more logically validated by my ongoing uh, cup floweth over of joy and goodness that is this duality relationship. But that didn't answer your question. NTJ's SE? I don't know. You, how's your SE? Sixers. Xerxes. Jeremy. 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 Cizeris? Cizeris. I'm pretty sure you're mispronouncing that. I think it's quite exorous. Oh, well, then you're definitely mispronouncing it. It's quite ex, ex, exorous. Ex e -ris. Ex e rice. It's chi, quite ex e rice. Quite ex e rice. Um, yes, it's queer sexy rice. I like my rice, like my ladies, queer and sexy.
Why do you like your ladies queer? Ain't nothing like a good scissoring to get me going. As he binges. Oh shit, I gotta do a bunch of SE all at once because I've been neglecting it all month. I'm gonna go rub some trees. With my scrotum. That's what Jeremy does on Saturdays. He'll call, he'll get a call at his house. Hello? Yes, is this Jeremy's wife? This is Jeremy's mom. Yes, this is Jeremy's wife. Can I talk to him? This is Jeremy's mom again. Oh no, this is Jeremy's wife again. He's out engaging in scrotal tree rubs. It's that S.E. day, you know. Oh, that sounds splintery. This is Jeremy's mom again. Yes, often I have to spend hours with the tweezers when he gets home. This is Jeremy's wife again. Well, that's fascinating, Jeremy. I had no idea you did such thing. Tweeze carefully, my dear. You say when you get home. Tweeze carefully. Myriad are the splinters in my scrotum tonight, darling. Or rubbing your scrotum on trees. That's your favorite kind of SE activity. Scrotal Tree Rub 2017. If you missed Scrotal Tree Rub 2016, you missed some serious Scrotal Tree Rub action. There were scrotums, there was trees, there was rubbing. Of the former on the latter. People were getting splinters left and right. You could hear the squeals and the cries miles away. Girlfriends were there with tweezers. Ready to pull the splinters out of the men's scrotums. It was really, really inspiring. Anyhow, I'll be your broadcaster this year. I am host Eric, and I am the inventor of the world's biggest fan. Competitive scrotal tree rubbing. Never actually participated myself. Seems like a really stupid thing to do. You have a bunch of splinters in your scrotum. But that's not the point. I find that behavior like that forces me out of this feedback loop that takes place between NI and FI. Like, things are shitty. I know I feel bad. Things are shitty. I know I feel bad. Things are shitty. I know I feel bad. Things are super shitty. <laughs> yeah that's the song um i i find i found that engaging although i feel like i've over engaged in it se is um has been a really profound balancing act to my life you know with the uh with the motorbike it's uh it's very balancing for me it pulls me into the into the real world <clears throat> you know well you know the ultimate, the ultimate n i s e combo person is the martial arts monk who's super aware of all the surroundings and just walking super calmly but then you know bandits hiding in the bush he shows no sign of noticing the bandit but the bandit jumps out and he's just Pyah! punches him in the face and he's landing on the ground he just keeps walking he might pause to make sure he's okay. Uh, misguided son. And then put him on a side. <laughs> and then walk on. You know? Yeah, well, that is probably... Um, I uh, When I started going to meetings, you know, obviously you feel like absolute shit. And, and you're like... You're, you think you're tweaking out. Um but uh then some guy says to you you always look very composed I'm like what the fuck are you talking about 
I'll read this thing by Margie. The way socionics goes is Alpha starts off with ideas, N-E-T-I. Beta implements, F-E-S-E, but it's all chaos. Gamma comes in and organizes, T-E-F-I. Then Delta represents calmness and self-sufficiency, S-I-F-E, only to get boring, and Alpha has to come in again with ideas and change proposal for change. <laughs> the bandit in the bush. The bandit in the bush would be a good name for a lot of different things. You make a, a country song called that too. And it could be like, but suit, but mm, it's a good name, Kelly. But Kelly had warned the other girls that I was just a bandit in the bush. It could be like a duet. Hey, lady, you're looking special and good. Your boobs are shaking and jiggling. And I know I see those butt cheeks of yours. And they're walking when you are wiggling. Oh, don't be singing your kind words to me, lad. Because you know that I tell you shush. You claim you're a man with gold in your heart, but really you're a bandit in the bush. See? Another good duet. What's more of an S-E? What, how is weed S-E? Uh, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, what I've noticed is Adderall usually gets me to S-E a lot. So, I do a lot of S-E shit when I'm on Adderall. I do a lot of shit. I clean up. I do projects that are physical. I make a video instead of just coming in here and chatting and not making a video. Instead of just letting the raw channel live stream and I make a video. And that's what I've been doing for the last quite some time now. Let's see. Uh, the last hour and 17 minutes. But you know what? This has been 70, going on 78 minutes of non-stop gold. Pure gold. Every last millisecond of it was absolutely the most engaging media you'd ever seen up until the next millisecond. So thanks for watching, and I know you watched all hour and 18 minutes of it. And don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.